Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Al Haas, and with me here today is Team 18270, the Robo Players from Texas. They're currently in the Ochoa Division and were the winning alliance captain at the Texas State Championship. Just absolutely fantastic robot driving everything, and I'm really excited about this behind the bot, so let's just jump right in. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. All right, guys, let's start with your drivetrain. I see you guys have the Mechanum wheels. Was there any changes you guys made for this season specifically, any challenges you had to address uh, that are really unique to your team? So this season, we decided to go for a normal Go Build a Strafer chassis because we originally decided that we wouldn't need to move that much. So it, And we also needed to fit a turret. So uh, we decided to go for an 18 by 18 inch drivetrain. And we also added these wheel guards so that we wouldn't get stuck on cones during autonomy. Yeah, and so I want to talk about the wheel guards actually just a little bit because I think it'll uh, be helpful later in the robot. I see these are laser cut, I assume. Yes. So you guys have access to a laser cutter and do you use that for rapid prototyping and other and final products or like how do you use that to your advantage? All right. So we, we all go to six different schools. Everybody is at a different school and at my school, our makerspace is, has a laser cutter and 3D printers. So anything custom on this robot is actually from my school, all the wood, all the 3D prints, and all the Gobelda stuff, we um, put it together at Skunda's house. Yeah, all right. So uh, let's move on to your intake. You guys have a very, very compact and quick intake. So how did the design come about? You know, what, what did you recognize that you needed to address that led to this design, and how has it changed throughout the season? So honestly, we first started off with trying to implement our own claw design. I mean, that didn't work at all. I mean, so then we resorted to Looney Claws. Um, we, made a, uh, we made a few revisions after the original Looney, Looney Claw. We wanted a wraparound, so we added some extrusions that go out a bit further and um, a harsher angle so that um, in our autonomous, uh, we directly just pick up from one axis. Like, we don't have a, we don't pick up straight vertically, uh, um, horizontally. So um, adding these iterations to the claw, it just helps us pick up the top and the bottom cone easier. Yeah, and so talking a little bit about the extension you guys have for your intake, how does it work? Have you made any changes throughout it, uh, for it throughout the season? Um, yeah. Initially, we started off with the four-stage Viper slide intake. I mean, it still is that, but we don't use that anymore because we realize we don't need to extend that far. So we are currently only using about like two stages max in our actual games, and yeah, that's been working out pretty well. Um, we still use string, and I don't know, it's not broken yet, so that's a plus. Yeah, and have you made any changes throughout the season? Like, did you have that Omni wheel on the front just from day one, or was that something you recognized you needed to add and then went ahead and added it? So the Omni wheel was something that we added later on after we just we thought that extending very far would be like a problem because our slides are only supported by one point and it would be very bad if we didn't yeah, support it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and so talking a little bit about the fact that your slides are supported by only one point, obviously you guys have the design capabilities and hardware capabilities to run dual stack slides, so it must have been a conscious decision to only have them on one side. So why did you do that? Looking back, would you change it or are you happy with this? I mean, uh, most of everything here is due to packaging. So with the Strafer, we were only really able to to have one uh, four-stage slide on one side, and also is because of what we have. We only have two four-stage kits, so, and also the one slide has actually been pretty helpful. We don't have to rely on supporting um, or both extending sides, both yeah. sides at the same time. So having one side has actually been pretty useful. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's go on to your turret and deposit now. We'll start with your turret. Uh, how is it powered? Have you made any changes to it? to it throughout the season, and then we'll jump into the software for it. So our turret is a Go Build a Worm Gear box. And then uh, this is, we use this because it doesn't have any like, it, you can't back drive it. But the only problem that we had uh, right now is that the gears would be like wearing out really quickly. So we had to replace them. Yeah, and so did you guys decide on a turret from day one, or was it a decision to change the design a little bit throughout the season? So in our first meet and second meet, 
This robot here was, our robot was nothing like this, what we have here. We had a completely different design. It was a one-arm virtual four bar with a vertical pass, passive deposit. And we quickly reached the potential of that. We had a one plus one autonomous. And we realized autonomous is what wins us games. So we decided to completely redesign to what we have here. We got the inspiration mostly from Technova and Turbo V8. So we decided to have the extendo intake as well as the turret outtake based on that. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing that really sets some teams apart from others in in, uh, in the sense of the deposit is their transfer. You know, making sure you optimize that transfer sequence as much as possible, make it 100% consistent so you don't miss any cones. So how does your guys' transfer work? Have you done anything special to make it super, super consistent? Walk us through it. Yeah, so we implemented a lot of hard straps into our robots that whenever the robot is like, physically at its furthest back position, the transfer works perfectly. So um, obviously this is on a turret. So our, every single time the slide retracts, our outtake slide, the turret recenters and and then we have that hard stop. So we, we're never relying on a certain encoder position for um, our transfer. Yeah, and so uh, one more question about your turret going back to that. How do you track its location throughout Teleop and Autonomous? Are you using any sensors or is it just any external sensors or is it just based off the internal motor encoder? Um, the the entire robot uses motor encoders. We have no dead wheels, and every single mechanism relies on encoders. The only uh, main sensors that we have is a color sensor on the intake, and this is being used mostly for autonomous, detecting the stack. So when we extend, we know how far to extend. So if the cone was in the, our grasp, and mm -hmm. if not, and also our camera for April tags and autonomous. Got it. Yeah. And so now going on to your deposit extension, I see you guys are running a belt-driven slide system. So has it been like that this entire season? Was it something you switched to for Texas State's Worlds. Walk me through that. Uh, so it originally had stringing and that was like, it was kind of unreliable because at the bottom it would just kind of get stuck. At, and then when we switched to belts, all those problems went away. Awesome. And so would you recommend teams run belt-driven slides uh, in the future for future challenges in all lift systems or just specifically for vertical lifts? Um, I would say if you if you have a, uh, a lift that has a lot of force play on it, use a belt. But then uh, keep in mind that the belt may come off the bearing. So you might need to add some shims or spaces for that. Um, yeah, and I know something other teams have done is they've printed uh, much larger bear, uh, pulleys for that motor belt or increase their belt wrap. Is that uh, something you guys thought you had to do? Did you have any problems with it or not really? Um, we've always had 1120 RPM motors on our outtake. And I would like to say one thing about belts is make sure to uh, uh, account for skipping. With our outtake, we actually do skip a little here and there, but we make sure in code that when the uh, velocity is zero and the outtake is fully down, we re-zero it mm -hmm. to make sure our we don't ha accumulate drift over time. Yeah, that's just motor.getvelocity method. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. And so now going on to your deposit system specifically, I see you guys have two servos here, one for your arm or one for your flipper and then one for the junction guide. So how have these changed throughout the season and how do they work now? So initially with the first design of this robot and our first, um, I guess, showcase with this robot. We never had a single pole guide and our autonomous was basically just blinding drop, like a blind drop. So we didn't, uh, it was pretty like a lot of luck, I guess. So mm -hmm. um, for our future things, we added this pole guide and it started off a lot smaller, obviously. And then it gradually got bigger and bigger until it became like almost our trademark, I guess, having the V-shaped gigantic pole guide that bends the pole. Yep. And so... Uh, obviously the passive, we always stuck with the passive outtake because we thought it was just easier and faster and we didn't need the extra servo at the end. Yeah, so I see you guys have like some servo mounts over here, so did you prototype it and just realized it really wasn't needed? Um, funny story about that, we always wanted to have a way to hold the cone up while we were flipping, uh, so to have it active. But we put the servo there at Texas States, but we never got to it. So we just left it unplugged and there was nothing on it. And we ran an entire competition with just the servo doing nothing. Okay. And so we finally took it out for a Got it. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes uh, complete sense. So I guess one of the last things I want to talk about with you guys is I remember at Texas States watching you guys drive, you would bend the pole like 60, 45, 60 degrees easily when you're scoring, you know, just making sure you're guaranteeing those points. So coming into Houston, you know, there were some rule changes. So how did you guys respond to that? What did you change in your match strategy and what would you recommend for teams who also need to adapt to new rulings? Uh, so if we were trying to like stay at a pole, we would make sure that uh, if our cone, if our cone was right here, 
we would always make sure that we bend the pole exactly enough so that it would still be inside. And then if we didn't, if we didn't have to stay there, we would just flip as fast as possible so defense doesn't get played on us. Yeah, of course. No, that's uh, that's definitely a really smart idea. So Robo players, thank you so much. I think this has been a fantastic interview. This robot's just so speedy and simple and complex at the same time. You know, really well put together, and you guys drive it excellently. So thank you so much for this interview. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 18270, the Robo players. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.